Hi folks, welcome back to another episode of Big Data, Big Questions. And so today I'm gonna to tackle a question around TensorFlow. And I wanted to give you my feedback, so I've been diving into TensorFlow and kind of looking into you know, how you set it up and then just actually just playing around with it and you know, seeing how it differs from some of the other machine learning uh, programs and things that I've used in the past like Mahout and you know, Madlib and some other things. So I wanted to give you my take on TensorFlow, tell you why I think it's great, tell you, you know, how you can get hands-on with it, and just give you some background on it. So find out more right after this. Welcome back. So before we jump into my thoughts on TensorFlow, I did want to encourage you to make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel here. And then also, if you have any questions, go ahead, send them in. You can go to my website, thomashenson.com forward slash big hyphen questions. I will answer any of your questions there. You can put them in the YouTube, YouTube comment section here below, or you can use the hashtag big data, big questions on you on Twitter. And I will answer those as quickly as I can. Thank you everybody for subscribing. And now let's talk a little bit about TensorFlow. So I've been kind of going through and going down more of the uh, deep learning path. So I've done been doing some research and some learning on my own. Um, one of the first things that I've started really diving into is TensorFlow. And so I wanted to look at TensorFlow because I have a background. Um, when I first started out in uh, the Hadoop ecosystem, we, we weren't really doing streaming. So you've probably, you know, you, you've heard me talk a little bit about the Kappa and the Lambda architecture here. So, you know, make sure you check those videos out. But one of the things that we did use back when we were just using Batch, um, you know, more of a Lambda architectures uh, workflow is I used my a good bit. And so we used my how and I used SVD. And so I wanted to see how TensorFlow differed, right? Because there's a, I mean, a lot of people are talking about TensorFlow. Like, hey, you know, a lot of training. There's a lot of training out there. There's a lot of YouTube videos out there. And there's just a lot of excitement for TensorFlow. So me wanting to dig in, I looked in and I, I started playing around with it. One of the first things that I really noticed and one of the things that I really liked about TensorFlow was the fact that when we think about like using Mahout or using some of the old other algorithms, one of the problems that I had was we had our data scientist and they would look at and they would you know play around and figure out you know what they wanted from their data model, exactly what algorithms they were going to use. A lot of times they were coming and we were still new to the to this, but they were they were coming in from you know using things on their on their machine, right? So they were using MathLab or Octave, or I mean, some of you even using Excel, right? And so once you go and you say, hey man, you know, I had this when we were looking at this little sample of data, now let's scale it out to, you know, terabytes and terabytes of data. I wanna see how this is gonna work. Those algorithms are totally different, right? So what you can run on your local machine and the, you know, the way that those are processed is totally different than the way Mahout does it, or, you know, the way Madlib or, you know, you know MLib, any, any, any of the distributed machine learning algorithms. So, not all the work that you did there, but there was a lot of new steps that you had to go through versus with TensorFlow, the thing is you can run it on your local machine, don't have to have a distributed environment, but those the same, the same processes and the same way the algorithm works is going to run on your huge cluster. And so just think about it like this. I mean, to do TensorFlow, you don't have to, you don't have to set up a distributed network. It's not going to, it's not going to time out. It's not going to go fast on your single machine, right? You know, if we're, if we're, if we're trying to turn over, you know, a terabyte of data that you've got, you know, on your laptop there, have at it, but not going to, you know, it's not, it's not going to be as efficient, right, as, you know, as you set up in your data center there. But the cool thing is, is when you're doing sampling and you're doing testing, you can do that locally, right? You, so you can do that on your local machine. And then when it comes time to test it, you're really just porting because, we, you, you know, you can use Docker and some some other cool tools on the back end to be able to just expand that into your data center. So I thought that was really cool. A little bit about TensorFlow. So TensorFlow was incubated out of Google. If you're interested in it, I would encourage you to, I'll put this link in um, the show notes for my, uh, on my web website, but I would check out the uh, research paper, Large Scale Machine Learning on Heterogeneous Distributed Systems. So, ten, you know, TensorFlow. It kind of goes into some of the research behind it and why, you know, why TensorFlow, why now, but I mean, I'm really, really heavy into it. And I know sometimes these research papers, or most of the time for me, the research papers are kind of over your head, but first time you read it, you might be like, ah, I don't really understand it. But then the second time, and then as you see it more, it's going to help you. So that's my own, my little tip about research papers. 
just go ahead, read them, become, you know, become familiar with them. And it's okay that you don't understand it because it means that you're actually learning. So also a lot of resources out there for TensorFlow. Um, there's a website that you can go to and you can, you can start playing around with how these neural networks are going to work in TensorFlow and different parameters you can play with and just gives you a visualization for, you know, how it's going to identify uh, image data and then be able to be able to use TensorFlow in your own environment. So I would encourage you to use the website to go ahead and play and look for all this stuff in the show notes here. Until then, that's all I wanted to talk about today on TensorFlow. But until the next time, I will see you on Big Data, Big Questions. Thank you.